Well, guys, it's time to expose the BBC once more because another Tory MP, Sir Desmond Swain, has called out the government much like Charles Walker did yesterday. And now as then, the BBC are showing us they have the consistency of a wet fart when it actually comes to government scrutiny. In fact, they are outright covering for them at this point and using discredited toss pots to help further the narrative. I say this because the BBC got Sir Desmond Swain on Radio 4's Today programme earlier to talk about the government's actions over Christmas, or should I say run damage control for the government's actions actions while they are promoting the words of Neil Ferguson. You know, the Imperial College modeler who consistently gets everything wrong and sneaks around the country going balls deep in other people's wives, as some of you might remember. The media called him Professor Lockdown before this, but his name should be Professor Pork Sword, as that is the only thing about him that seems useful to anyone. He cocks everything else up royally, as his record shows, so cocking other people's wives might come naturally to him, a bit like breathing. But more importantly though, and fucking incredible at this point, is the fact that the B BBC continue to get him on the airwaves, and of course the minor unreported detail being that the government still takes advice from him, because as expected his resignation was just for public consumption after getting caught dishing out pork sword to another man's wife during the first lockdown. He was always working behind the scenes to fuck this country over with the rest of them, and he even stated today that tier 4 will be here until the spring at least, but back to Desmond Swain, he was not as direct in his attack against the government as Charles Walker was, but yet again he is spot on. As you all know, politicians don't often do what is right, so the few that do should certainly be recognised. It's not just the snivelling shit weasels of this world that require our attention and a video or two. Now one thing Desmond Swain does point out is that the government knew and have been looking at this so-called new strain since September, but conveniently have decided to use it now, as is much of what the government do at this point. 2020 should be called the year of convenience for governments, but inconvenience for the people. And fucking mutant strain as they say, yeah mutant strains of bullshit are flowing in 2020, let me tell you that. I don't know about anything else. But you know what, enough talk, let's listen to what Sir Desmond Swain had to say, and of course the BBC host run damage control yet again. Benches Sir Charles Walker claimed on The World this weekend the ministers knew that they were planning to cancel Christmas on Wednesday when they were still telling the Commons they planned to press ahead. Well, we can talk now to Sir Desmond Swain, who's the Conservative MP for New Forest West. Good morning. Good morning. Do you know the government said that they only found out the, the true uh, nature of the new COVID uh, variant on Friday and they took the action, they announced restrictions as soon as they could after that? They, that may be so, but the reality is that the arrangements for Christmas were explicitly voted on by Parliament. If they're to be changed, then in my view, Parliament should vote again. But given the, the nature of the variant, as outlined by uh, scientists advising the government, didn't ministers need to act immediately? Ministers have those powers under the 1984 Public Health Act. But nevertheless, as I said, Parliament voted explicitly for a certain set of arrangements. It seems to me perfectly proper, therefore, that Parliament should be consulted when those are changed, irrespective of the, uh, the government acting in an emergency. Nevertheless, it's perfectly proper to recall Parliament for the beginning of, beginning of this week uh, to at least ratify those changes. Explain to us, we are, after all, a democracy, explain to the, represent the elected representatives the evidence that they have and why they've reached this decision. Right, I've got to stop that there because Desmond Swain is right. Even if the government can do these tier four rules, it is suspicious that they're not going back to Parliament as they agreed with Tory MPs. But the BBC presenter's reaction to what he is saying made me laugh. The reason I had to chuckle to myself after hearing that is the ability to remember how much they supported Parliament having a say on every little thing that Boris did last year in relation to Brexit. Because you all might remember last year when he shut down Parliament to get Brexit done, the BBC and all left-wing media toss pot literally shit the bed, screaming for Supreme Court cases and calling him a fucking dictator. Now that he's actually acting like a dictator, ruling by decree, they defend him and actually bend over backwards to run damage control against his own MPs. You really couldn't make this shit up, could ya? The flip-flopping from the BBC here is fucking biblical and shows a lack of awareness on their part. Likely because they do not care what us mere peasants think. At the end of the day, Sir Desmond Swain is only asking for MPs to see what the government is doing, debate it and vote as per the Democrats 
democratic system, but the speed in which they are defending this lunacy, you would think he was calling for Boris Johnson's head on a pike outside the Tower of London or something. Now anyway, let's check out what more he had to say, and of course, a bit more damage control from the BBC. But is this purely a box ticking exercise, or do you actually think that the government was wrong to introduce these new restrictions? I haven't seen the evidence, and uh, I, it does have all the uh, the characteristics of the government being bounced by the science, as it was right at the beginning of the arrangements when we first went into lockdown last March. For the government's policy was one thing, and then all of a sudden, the uh, modelling by uh, Professor Ferguson was produced and the government was bounced. And I, I just think, you know, over the last few weeks, we've had this increasing frustration amongst the health lobby that their arguments about Christmas were not having any purchase on the government. And then suddenly... After the government was explicit last Wednesday, a day or two later, the government is bounced by the sudden revelation but of this new evidence. Will you say I'm sudden re skeptical. revelation? But this, this, well, you, you may. I mean, and modelling and modelling can change. But this isn't about modelling, isn't it? This is looking at the nature of um, the new COVID uh, variant. The Chief Medical Officer for Public Health England uh, said that they've been looking at it um, from taking samples in September, but it was only on Friday that they were able to say that the virus itself was um, hugely infectious, that the variant is up to 70% more transmissible than previous types. Yes. yes, they've been looking at it since September. And how convenient when Parliament went into recess on Thursday, suddenly they were then able to um, uh, produce this revelation. Well, I, that's you know, attributing I think a, real political motivation to the scientists, isn't it? Well, let's see the evidence then. Let's have Parliament back and show us and convince us. Come clean. Well, they've, pub they've published the, the minutes of nerve tag. They've published that evidence, haven't they? I want, I want Parliament to be recalled so that we can scrutinise properly in a democracy decisions that are being made which affect our economy radically and our liberty. Well, once again, Sir Desmond Swain is right on the money, but did you notice the speed in which she interrupted him any time he was about to poke a major hole in the bullshit? That is why she jumped in like her job depended on it, because maybe it did. If you ask me, she was about 10 seconds away from calling him a conspiracy theorist, I am sure. Especially when he called out the health lobby not getting its own way until now. You could tell her ass puckered up tighter than a snare drum because maybe they are some of her paymasters. We all know the BBC presenters do a lot of work on the sides. I've actually covered it before. Now, let's hear the last little bit of the interview itself, which I'm sure you would agree is a complete clusterfuck from start to finish. How much it's anger not, would you say that there is ask. about this on the back benches? I should say, actually, a great deal. We heard from our political correspondent, though, that the chances of you being able to get a recall of Parliament are minuscule. The recall of Parliament requires uh, a request by the government to the Speaker. Uh, why would the government be so reluctant to recall Parliament? Is it that it's not sure of the evidence that it has and that its case isn't as convincing as it ought to be? What's government frightened of? Frightened of its Sir Parliament? De Sir Desmond Swain, thank you. And we will be hearing from the Cabinet Minister at 10 past eight. So you've heard it for yourself there, guys, throughout the entire interview. Desmond Swain is simply calling on the government to stop hiding from scrutiny, which is, of course, the right thing to do. The BBC, on the other hand, sits there doing its best to belittle him and anyone who goes against the government's narrative. But like I said, it is especially funny because of their actions last year when the government shut down Parliament to avoid the Remainers' attempts to block Brexit. It's amazing how they had a massive problem with that, but now everything seems to be fine. This time, obviously, it has to be done to lock us all in our homes like criminals and ban you from spending Christmas with your family. So I guess, like I said, that is okay with the BBC. Now, as I also said earlier, about an hour after this, the BBC had Professor Pork Sword on there trying to give credibility to Tier 4. I had hoped that the BBC would actually say, why should people listen to you, given all you have fucked up in the past? But obviously they didn't. Instead, they treated him like he was Albert Einstein, who knows it all and might as well have sucked his dick. They bent over backwards so hard to air his bollocks and stroke his ego. It is actually that much dribble there 
is no point me even including it in this video, so I'm just going to end it there. The BBC have shown themselves to be the low-life dirty fuck pigs we always knew they was, and I would say they are this week's snivelling shit weasel of the week without contest, a bit like government ministers' mates getting multi-million pound contracts without contest. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>